is Dr. Cheryl Selman, and welcome to The Love Code. I'm so glad you're joining me today because not only do I have a wonderful, inspiring conversation, but it's just good to be reminded these days that we are part of this profound time of transformation, and it is time to stay connected, to do our spiritual work, however that may look for you. It's important to take time to meditate. It's important to be inspired. It's important to connect to the healing power that you have within you. I like to say during these times of change and uncertainty that we are all living in, you need to be anchored to the truth within you. So do whatever is appropriate, what is aligned with you to strengthen your spiritual connection. That's the most important work we can be doing at this time. And do not get distracted by the external events, as challenging as that may be. Stay connected to the core of your essence and to your truth and to your power and to your love and to your healing. So if you are listening for the very first time, thank you for joining me. If you would like to get the archive shows from the many inspiring guests that I have, and and the show really is designed to bring you inspiration and awakening, then you can go to my Facebook page, which is What Women Must Know, What Women Must Know. And if you want to know why my Facebook page is called What Women Must Know, it's because I have another program on Progressive Radio Network every Thursday at 4 p.m., called What Women Must Know. So if you go to that Facebook page, you will get both of my podcasts that are posted every week, or you can go to my website, which is drcherylselman.com, and just opt in there so I can send the archive shows out to you. And and there's other information and programs and vegetation material that I send out as well. So if you want to be part of the community, I welcome you. Please join me and continue the journey of self-awareness and healing. And we're talking about self-awareness and healing today with my guest, John Jacob Mubarak. And um, let me just share a little bit about John, and we'll talk about the subject that is so fascinating to me. So John is the Director of Marketing and New Business Development at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica. He is also a licensed spiritual practitioner, having studied at the Agape International Spiritual Center in California. John has devoted his life's work to the spirit of truth and in service to spiritual truth seekers through leading workshops, retreats, public speaking engagements, and spiritual counseling. And John is truly a delight because I actually met John, have met John many times when I have been down to Rhythmia in Costa Rica. Rhythmia is the only medically licensed plant medicine center in the world. And we're talking today about awakening to your highest potential through ayahuasca and lots to be said about this fascinating subject and it's a subject that I personally find extremely profound, and it's been a profound journey in my life working with this plant medicine. So it's my pleasure to welcome John Jacob Mubarak to the show. So, John, hello and welcome. Hello, hello, Dr. Selman. Thank you so much. It's a, such a pleasure to, to be on the show and, and to think back to all of our wonderful time together as we've spent over the years at Rhythmia. It's always so great to have you there, and so I'm grateful to be with you now. Well, it's been an amazing time, and I look back. um, It's about five years since I first was introduced to Rhythmia, and I've gone once or twice a year since then. So Rhythmia has uh, been a very important part of my life, and I've seen it grow and evolve and have a profound impact impact on so many people's lives. So we're going to be sharing about the power of plant medicine. We'll be talking about Rhythmia. And I will also let people know who may be inspired to come to Rhythmia and to understand the power of plant medicine that um, I'll be doing a group, a special group, 
in May, May 9th to 16th, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Well, I will be teaching there as well as bringing the group. So it's going to be an amazing time. It's um, it's a year for profound transformation, don't you think, John? Absolutely. Everything is coming up to be healed, right? It's, this is the, the nature of uh, plant medicine, the nature of the universe, the nature of our curriculum in life is that everything that is happening is happening for us and that it's coming up to reflect and reveal the areas within us that are seeking to be healed. So indeed, a great year for transformation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, before we get into the, the world of plant medicine, I, I'm curious to know a little bit about your journey because, um, you know, I, I know I've met you when you became involved with me, with me. I didn't really know you before, but I, I'm sure you have an interesting story, and I'd love to hear it. So, can you tell a little bit? Tell us a little bit about your journey of your spiritual awakening in this lifetime. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. Um, you know, I was uh, born and raised in Tucson, Arizona, and. Um, and a, a very, you know, my parents are immigrants from Lebanon, and um, we're Christian Lebanese, so we grew up in, in very Catholic, and yet my mother was very mystical. And um, while she would be very involved in the Catholic Church, she also would go to Peru and meditate with what she would call the great masters and the violet light, you know. And I remember being in high school thinking, oh, boy, my mom's really lost it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what is this violet light, you know? And um, and as a as a young man, as a gay man growing up, I didn't feel connected with the Catholic Church, and I really kind of threw out all of spirituality and religion, kind of lumped it together, and lived my life for many years. Uh, I was a debater in college and um, studied rhetoric and composition, uh, and so it was very analytical. Uh, very, very much about analysis. And, and I used to say to my mom, mom, you can't affirm your way out of this situation. You know, life, life is what it is. You, you know, it doesn't matter how rosy you put words uh, together. It doesn't change the facts. So that was kind of where I was at for many years. And I began in my 30s um, feeling this call towards seeking some connection spiritually and a friend of mine one day invited me to Agape. And I walked in, and the music was amazing. You know, the music was the first thing that got me. And, uh, and then Michael Bernard Beckwith got up to speak, and he spoke in a way that was so – it activated all of the seeds that my mother had planted for all of those years. He was in complete alignment with the core beliefs and values of spiritual growth and unfoldment that my mother had articulated and I was just immediately turned on. Um, I was married at the time, and my husband didn't really dig agape. And, and we were in not a very healthy relationship, so I, I would sneak away <laughs> on Sundays when I could <laughs> to go to agape. And then, you know, once we decided to dissolve our marriage, we were married actually in, in California before Proposition 8 passed, so we were one of the 18,000 couples that were married. We were together for eight years. And um, when we decided to uh, uncouple, consciously uncouple, um, uh, I immediately went to, to Agape full-time. I started studying, and I found um, in the classes and in being of service and volunteering there, um, I really found for the first time my, my past. For so many years, I had felt you know, a jack of all trades, master of none. I had worked in the petroleum industry. I had taught industrial engineering and, and English on the university level um, in, in Mexico. I had um, worked for the Ritz Carlton and JW Marriott as food and beverage directors. I'd done um, uh, stand up comedy. I had studied spirituality. I had written academically. Um, all of these things sound great and a wonderful life, but none of them carried a through line. None of them had a sort of singularity of purpose. And, and I always wondered, you know, as I started to get into my 40s, like, boy, when am I going to pull my head out of my ass and figure out what it is that I'm supposed to do? And, um, and 
as I began to really come to my fullness at Agape and, and decide that I wanted to devote my life to um, service as a spiritual practitioner, and the spiritual practitioner is really uh, a spiritual counselor um, that is not a body of knowledge, but a body of consciousness. And, um, and as I fully engaged in that program, it was a four year licensing program. Um, I began to see very clearly that life was preparation for me, that all of the things that I thought were flitting from idea to idea, no consistency, no through line, that all of it was in preparation. Um, I was also the sales manager uh, at a yacht company. You know, I, I mean, I've just done all of these different things. I worked in music publishing. Um, so all these wonderful things, none of them seemed consistent. And, um, and as I graduated from, from the program uh, to become a spiritual therapist, a spiritual counselor, um, I saw very clearly that my life purpose really was outlined in, in, in three parts. First, the only thing that really excited me was my own spiritual growth and development. And, and then secondly, to walk that path with others. And the third thing that emerged was this crazy idea that seemed like nothing I could do on my own, but I had this call to be of service to something greater, to be of service to a world that really works for the best and highest individual and collective good. And that was a big, grand idea. Who am I to be a part of that? But I saw you know, at, that, that uh, moving into being a spiritual practitioner, that that really was showing that all of the things that I had done in life were sort of in preparation for this. I felt very keenly at that time. And just as I uh, sat for my boards and got my license and was thinking I needed to get an office and start seeing clients and transition, at that time I was the director of sales for a yacht company in, in Marina Del Rey. And how am I going to transition out of this lucrative life and, and, and transition into being a, a therapist? And just as I did that, I got a call from a friend uh, that um, Kimberly Gambles uh, from Thrive called and said, we need someone to come down and, and work with us at Rhythmia, and, um, and we need somebody that can, can share with our, our guests and clients in a way that can, that's spiritual. Uh, and I decided to come down and check it out. And I went down, and I saw even more so that my life was a life of preparation because now I stepped into um, working at this company that was a hotel and a restaurant in an international setting that required Spanish, that required international business knowledge, that required hotel and restaurant management, that required sales, that required marketing, that required um, a little bit of performance and stand-up comedy, analysis, critical thinking, <laughs> you know, like everything that I had done that seemed like a wasted life, crystal clear, it was preparation, and I love the biblical quote, um, all the years that the locusts have eaten away shall be given back to you. And indeed, um, with just a shift of perspective, a life that seemed to be wasted, a life that seemed to be, you know, with no through line, suddenly crystallized into a life that was lived in preparation, that spirit was guiding me the whole time, and that everything that I picked up along the way was now being used fully in this endeavor. Uh, and so there's the, the not so short version of um, my spiritual path. <laughs> and, you know, thank you for sharing that, John. I appreciate it. And it is so inspiring to help all of us to understand that as we move through life and the experiences we have, while we may not understand the greater purpose and how they will serve us in the future, but there comes a time when we look back and we can see the perfection of everything we've done, all the challenges, all the difficulties, how they have empowered us and strengthened us and allowed us to really be where you are right now of greater service. So that, you know, I love your story. Thanks so much for showing that. And your mother must have been so thrilled when she finally was able to have a conversation with you about what is the you know a passionate part of her life, <laughs> her her very articulate uh, debating son, <laughs> very intellectual, <laughs> has finally opened his heart and, and gets his mom. <laughs> I'm sure yes. that was a wonderful time for her. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> you so, patiently you know, waited a long time. <laughs> here's the irony, uh, Cheryl, is that that just as that occurred, um, she really began to slip into dementia, and hmm. um, and the the really it was this sort of the dementia was rising as I was starting to follow my spiritual path, and. I never got to have that conversation with her because she lived for many years after that, but it was, you know, she, she didn't have any, we used to have really wonderful long conversations, but she didn't have the capacity to continue with the short-term memory. However, you know, our true nature is, is always our true nature. And she was always so loving and so kind and genuinely caring um, with that beautiful unconditional love that, it almost didn't matter that we couldn't have that conversation because we were connected. And, um, and, and I feel now she's been gone uh, six years and I feel so close to her and I feel her in meditation. And um, I know that as for, for all of us who have loved ones on the other side of the veil, um, the message is that they can be of more service to us now than they ever were on earth and that we can rely on them and communicate with them. So I have that conversation now in consciousness. You know, uh, as you're talking and uh, around this time with your mom, you know, the real language and the real communication is one of the heart anyway, John. Mm -hmm. So just being able to, I'm sure, be there and just be in this open, loving space with your mom, not the, not the intellect, involved but truly just heart to heart is the greatest communication that's the greatest communication any of us could truly have that's that's the real source of uh, connection and understanding when we when we just are in our hearts just saying nothing just being in our heart energy so how uh, it was beautiful what a beautiful a beautiful time and a beautiful story to share with us and great Thank you. Grateful it was beautifully said as well. Thank you. Thank you. So, so let's let's talk about the the journey with plant medicine. And I just want to say that um, six years ago, well, for those of you who've been listening to the show, you know that I have been on my own spiritual journey for uh, many, many, many. Well, actually, since I my my senior year at university was a time when I had a spiritual awakening. So it's been a guiding force in my life ever since. And uh, I've done many things and did many workshops and programs and lived in ashrams and kind of like you, John, <laughs> I've been around the block a few times <laughs> and, in, in my way. And um, six years ago, I felt that I, there wasn't a workshop I could do anymore. There wasn't a program. There was, you know, it was like I, I just felt there was something beyond the known to take me to a deeper place within myself. And that's when I read an article about ayahuasca. And I just read this article and I just <laughs> said, I need to do this. And I called um I called some friends and I said, Look, I'm I'm gonna go to Peru. Do you wanna come with me? And I had a little gang that came along on this adventure and that was the beginning of exploring the power of plant medicine, of a healing spiritual path that has been used by many cultures for thousands of years. In fact I was listening to an interview that Joe Rogan did with um uh, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, this this man who had spent um, a decade researching the uh, truth of the fact that in the Bible, at, in, in biblical times, and in ancient Greece, they were using plant medicines to alter consciousness and commune with other dimensions. I mean, it's been known for thousands of years and, you know, throughout the world, actually. It was a fascinating conversation. And I I was so drawn to this new area of exploration. And that's how I entered into the world of plant medicine. And uh, I learned about Rhythmia after my 
time in Peru and decided to experience what was happening at Ripnia because it was so unique, being the only licensed plant medicine center, which meant they had a full-time medical staff and could just support people. So I want to talk about plant medicine. It's become so popular these days. And it's not only popular with people who are seeking healing, seeking healing from you know, emotional trauma, seeking healing from post-traumatic stress, seeking healing for chronic health issues, seeking healing to just bring the people's people bringing their lives to together in a more spiritual way. But it's also an area of study that has caught the attention of researchers, of scientists. Um, we're looking at more and more states legalizing psilocybin in the United States and understanding psilocybin is a powerful mushroom plant medicine to help with depression, anxiety. There was a wonderful documentary uh, I interviewed the producer last year that focused on the healing of two vets with PTSD who were highly traumatized and were introduced to ayahuasca, and they were on lots of meds, and it was just, you know, heartbreaking to see what their lives were like and how it affected their family, and they went on a journey with ayahuasca and totally transformed, healed their lives, healed their families. So this is so relevant, and it's coming to the fore. There's a, there's a yearning in people. There's a searching for ways to access altered states of consciousness that give us knowledge and healing. And that's why we're having this conversation, because this is what you are so involved with. So so I'm just going to kind of invite you, John, to share some of your thoughts about the role of plant medicine that helps us to awaken to our highest potential. Mm. Well, you know, you had um, talked very you know, keenly about some of the the scientific um, uh, inroads that, that plant medicines have made with the healing of PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, as well as other mental disorders, uh, and the fact that this has been used um, for thousands of years. Uh, what I would say in terms of the the actual effect of, of plant medicine in terms of healing and awakening to our highest potential is what we say at Rhythmia is, is the plants have been trying to do the same thing for thousands of years. And that is to show you who you've become, to merge you with your soul and heal your heart. Um, those are our three group contentions at Rhythmia. And that really is what happens in plant medicine journeys. And that's what, that's what happens in life. Um, we must go through that process, and we all go through that process. Unfortunately, most people end up doing that on their deathbed, you know, and the beautiful thing about plant medicine is it allows you to wake up to those to that sooner. So when we say, um, show me who I've become, it shows me that the plant medicine shows us some aspect. Why, why does it help us wake up to our potential? Because typically we're living a life based on who we think we need to be to get our needs met. And that typically emerges uh, in early childhood. Something happens. It could be as benign as I didn't get held on time or uh, I didn't get fed when I wanted to. Um, or it could be something as traumatic as, as abuse, physical, mental abuse. Anything on that spectrum, it doesn't matter. It's by design. It happens. And we say to ourselves as children, because, you know, in that state, zero to five or six years old, we're incredibly self-centered. The world revolves around us. And so if I didn't get held when I wanted to, or I didn't get fed on time, or I was abused, clearly who I was being at that time wasn't sufficient to get my needs met. And, and there's a subconscious trigger that occurs and we say, well, I've got to become something else in order to get my needs met. I've got to be the smart guy, the hero, the responsible one, the jock, the class clown, the, um, the pretty one, the responsible one, whatever it is that we think we need to be in order to get our needs met. And then we live our lives from this separated sense of self. 
divorced to an extent from the true sense of wholeness and um, and perfection that we are. We're never separate from it, but there's this illusion that we're separate from it. So the first thing that plant medicine really does is help us see who we've become as a result of this core wounding that we all go through. The act of seeing that is the act of merging with our soul, is the act of coming back to a state of wholeness, coming back into integrity and alignment with the truth of who we are, that we are perfect, whole, and complete as we are, that life is for us. Um, and, and from that place, you know, we say plant medicine done wrong answers every question. Many people come to Rhythmia with so many questions. Is this the right person that I'm supposed to be with? Where should I live? Is this the right job? What's my life purpose? What should I be doing? You know, hundreds of questions. And we say plant medicine done wrong will answer all those questions. But plant medicine done right eliminates those questions because from a state of wholeness, you know what the right thing is. There's a resonance. There's a clarity. There's an, there's an inner knowing beyond uh, human understanding. Just this is what's right for me. We know and admire people like that that are in alignment with themselves and can um, act based on that instead of being swayed by external circumstance. So that state of wholeness is that awakening to our sense of, of life's purpose because from that state of wholeness, we can heal, heal our hearts, heal our wounds, and forgive the unforgivable. This is this is the intention of plant medicine. It is bringing us into harmony. We like to say that the plant medicine is like a concentrated drop of nature. Um, you know, nature is human nature. We are part of nature. And and as William Wordsworth said in his poem, the world is too much with us, getting and spending late and soon. We lay waste our power. Little we see in nature that is ours. Um, it's a sordid boon, he says. It's a bad exchange that we give up our freedom and our connection with nature for the coming and going and busyness of life and the getting and the spending. And so when people come to Rhythmia, they ingest this concentrated drop of nature that has a, a very specific frequency. We know that everything from quantum physics is vibration and frequency, sound and light. And so Everything has a frequency. Everything is vibrating. And so this plant has a very high frequency. And when we ingest it, according to the law of entanglement, you know, a lower vibrational frequency cannot diminish a higher frequency, but the higher frequency will raise the lower frequency. And so as we ingest this plant medicine, it, anything unlike it, anything, any sense of fear, doubt, worry, not enoughness, lack, limitation, um, that, that tends to be hidden in our subconscious beliefs come up. They're, they're, they're brought to the surface because there's this high vibrational frequency that you've ingested and it either, you need to either raise those, those limited forms of thought or purge them. And that's what happens. People, even, people release so much trauma. They release so many lower vibrational frequencies and come to this state of wholeness at a high vibrational frequency. And from that place, there's just a direct knowing this is what's next for me. This is where I want to go. This is how I can serve. So there's some of the ways that um, plant medicine works to awaken us to our highest potential, because ultimately um, our, our purpose, everybody has the same purpose. Our purpose is to awaken. Our purpose is to perfect our loving. We're here to perfect our loving. And, and then each of us has a unique iteration of that purpose. How are we going to deliver our gifts and talents so that we're, and our skills, so that we're fully used, that we're contributing to the energetic vibration of the planet. And so um, uh, this, this awakening to that overall purpose my uh, to perfect my loving and my individual purpose how can i use my specific gifts and skills that all comes into clarity from a state of wholeness as we eliminate um the lower vibrational frequencies of fear doubt worry lack limitation and not enoughness i sure hope i answered your question <laughs> <laughs> well there's a, you know there's a lot to be said i i as you were sharing your thoughts about the journey with medicine it reminded me that I um, 
I realized that as a, you know, I've been a psychotherapist for many years and working with many tools and many techniques to help people access the place where they can heal their wound. And uh, I, I found some really effective tools, very powerful tools, but it was always operating more or less within the confines of the mind and of the intellect. And I realized at a point that we could never truly heal at the level that we operate on most of the time of our intellect. We have to actually access another dimension, so to speak, that can truly um, resolve the trauma. And if you're into working with brain you know, in neuroscience, it's its like pruning the default, the uh, default mechanism that we've been programmed, as you said earlier in life, and being able to have new pathways created in the brain, new neural connections, which is an interesting way to look at it. So what I have arrived at on my journey is to find tools that allow people to truly get beyond the place where the intellect uh, operates because the unconscious is a much more powerful place and that's where those wounds are stored in a sense. And the um, power of plant medicine opens us through the unique chemical components of plants like ayahuasca and psilocybin. And, of course, we can talk about DMT, which is a natural molecule that uh, opens us to higher states of consciousness and ayahuasca uh, releases to, uh, by going to higher state, uh, uh, altered states of consciousness, I don't even know, other states of consciousness, we are actually able to come to a resolution and a healing that we cannot come to by just counseling and working with techniques. That's that's what I personally have seen. That's what I have personally experienced. And that's why it's so attractive to me, that you can heal deep wounds, deep, deep wounds that are beneath the physical, the physical disease process, the physical, emotional patterning that uh, creates so much distress um, in our lives that we keep repeating. It's like there is a uh, programming that results in all of the source of suffering in our life. And through altered states, and you can get to altered states in different ways. Plant medicine is just one of them that allows us to truly resolve because it's opening us to an altered state, an alternative awareness where answers lie. You cannot figure out your problems with your intellect. <laughs> and um, those are the tools that we're looking for. Those are the tools that I am looking for for myself and sharing with other people. And that's what I, that's what attracted me to plant medicine and continues to attract me. I've done many journeys now and uh, people ask me, well, how are you different? And it's like, hmm, it's really hard to say because it's not like I've made a radical transition from one place to another, but I just feel so much more at peace and connected, trusting in life, allowing the unknown, to, allowing myself to operate in the unknown uh, without having all the answers and, and just knowing that there is a guidance that I can call upon to lead me. So it's living life in a much more a peaceful way. And that's why I think this work is so profound and the role of a place that you can do this work and feel safe and supported with experienced and trained uh, staff as well as the spiritual guidance through the shaman who are really critical in this journey, this this ritual, this ceremonial journey, is also um, so profound and so fascinating, to be honest. I, I have to say, I, I'm just in love with al uh, alternate realities. <laughs> you know, it's like so exciting. It's like it's like exploring new dimensions, and there there are gifts and awarenesses, and it takes a 
It takes courage to leave the known and venture into the unknown. So those are some of my thoughts. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about some of the research that you're aware of or the role of DMT, which is what makes ayahuasca such a powerful medicine. Um, well, what are your thoughts? What would you like to share about that? Yes, well, I love, I love what you said. Um, you know, first of all, there are, there's clearly, uh, you know, biochemical reactions that are occurring because of the plant. And we can dice the plant apart and see all of its constituent parts and, and come to a Western medicine or Western mind thinking, understanding of the science behind it. Um, and I, I'm happy to speak about that. And I will also say there is that spiritual truth that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, that there's something um, more than just these constituent parts. Now, um, ayahuasca uh, contains DMT, which is naturally occurring in the, cere- in the spinal fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid. And typically in, in states of openness, awareness, and ecstasy, and meditation, and breath work, uh, and lots of different ways that we can get to feeling that way. Typically, it's at the DMT that's in our spinal fluid, m- travels up uh, through the cervical spine, and, and tickles the little, little ends of the pineal gland in that chamber that the pineal gland resides in, in our brain. And it is that you know, when the DMT reaches the pineal gland, that um, these psych- psychogogic effects occur. Now, um, that's naturally occurring in the body. And the pineal gland is considered to be the sort of God gland, that, that spiritual seeing. It contains um, uh, cones and rods. It's made up of the same things that our eyes are made of, but there's no external light that comes to it. It is indeed a, 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 our, our spiritual eye, if you will. Um, now, ayahuasca contains many compounds. Some of them, harmine and harmaline, speak specifically to um, uh, neuroplasticity, which you were mentioning. Harmine and, har- har- harmine and harmaline are um, neurogenesis producing compounds, and cells typically um, that are placed in a petri dish with saline solution, uh, and cells that are, you know, brain cells, neurons that are placed in the, in the petri dish with harmine or harmaline, you'll see a much more robust migration of those cells, um, much more vitality and much more propagation. So um, ayahuasca in and of itself is, uh, creates neuroplasticity and increases our um, uh, neural pathways, you know, and, and this is the, uh, part of the openness and expansion. Um, also affects serotonin tremendously uh, and melatonin. And so those are, are two very important um, very important compounds in the body that uh, regulate mood and executive function, sleep patterns, circadian rhythms. Um, and, and so that's why ayahuasca has been, or DMT specifically as a molecule has been, um, is now being studied for headache, you know, migraine prescriptions, PTSD, um, depression and anxiety because of the serotonin effects. Um, all of the scientific research that's being done and, and lots of work being done in clinical trials to bring these molecules to the market is pharmaceuticals. They're calling it pharmawaska. And um, uh, mm-hmm. all of that said, um, the mystery and majesty that happens in ceremony and the holistic nature of this plant, right? So there are people who might have heard of uh, DMT and taking it as an isolated piece has great benefits, but there's also something to be said for the holistic approach of using the, the whole plant. And, and what I would say on the two things that, you know, we've talked a little bit about the Western mindset and the analysis of, of what ayahuasca and what is being studied for clinically. Um, and what Rhythmia represents is really the bridging of ancient wisdom, ancient practice, and modern science, modern technique. Um, so we have the shaman, we have the holistic team, we have the 5,000 year Shipibo tradition that we use in ceremony. We also have medical doctors and PhD psychiatrists, psychologists, and, um, and, and, and clinicians in a, a full clinic on property so that we're really bridging um, both of those uh, worlds uh, as well. And, and so I'll say this about 
what happens in ceremony. So we can talk about the analysis and what it does. But when you ingest and you know, Cheryl, you've been you've been to Rhythmia and you've done other plant medicine ceremonies as well, um, that there, there, you begin to see there's a couple things that can happen when you ingest the medicine. The first thing is you start to feel something in your body. You can shake. You can sweat. You can cry. You can laugh. You can feel nauseous. You can um, have to go to the bathroom, right? All of those things are physical physical uh, expressions. And the next thing that happens is that you begin to see something. We call it pinta. You can see shapes and beautiful sacred geometry and colors and vignettes. Well, at that point, I say that, that, that when I get to the pinta, when I start to see, and have you seen, you've seen the pinta, right? You've had that experience of seeing thick, you know, yeah, geometric. Yeah, which is, which is Spanish. We should just say pinta is Spanish for visual experiences, pictures, or, or visuals of, of some sort. Yes, like paint, pinta, like a painting, like some sort of visual, exactly. So, so uh, when I see that, I see that, and I'm seeing what I believe I'm seeing are standing waves. If, if, all, if all of life, if everything in this universe is vibration and frequency, light and, and sound, then we're seeing these light frequencies, very high vibrational light frequencies that, we, that are always there. We're just not seeing them. We're just not open. As you say, we're not in that dimensional elevator to go to different dimensions and see. They're always there. When we, in ceremony, when we see that, we're seeing these high frequency standing light waves of information. And the pineal gland is perfectly designed as an antenna to receive that high vibrational information. There's direct download beyond this is what I think the metaphysical and biblical reference to hear beyond what ears can hear and see beyond what eyes can see or the phrase, you know, beyond human understanding, a peace that surpasses human understanding. This is a direct knowing. And that, that pinta represents to me the standing light waves of high frequency information from the universal field, the universal field of oneness, of infinite possibility and potentiality. And our pineal gland is perfectly designed to metabolize that, to translate that information through the pituitary gland and all of the chemical toxic or tonic chemicals released, melatonin, serotonin, all of the amino acids and branch chains that are released by the pituitary gland uh, and in conjunction with the pineal gland that we're actually translating that information beyond thinking into the body and it is being integrated into the body, into a deep knowing. Um, so, so there's a little bit of both the, the mystical aspect of what happens in ceremony um, and, the, and, and a little bit of the science around it. There's so much research uh, going on right now that, that, that shows um, what the indigenous populations have known intuitively for many years and and yet as much as we try to parse it out with our analytical western minds um i still go back to the 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 whole is greater than the sum of the parts that there's still a mystery to this um and and we and, and and that this uh tremendous healing takes place primarily because as we ingest this concentrated drop of nature it brings us into harmony with nature. And when we are in harmony, you know, all spiritual growth and development, in my opinion, is harmonizing apparently disparate parts of ourselves. If I can bring, you know, we call it, you know, shadow work, right? If I can bring the light and the dark together, if I can bring my masculine and feminine energies together, instead of shoving one aside and prefacing another, if I can, you know, I don't want to deal with the darkness, I don't, that all the aspects of ourselves that we don't like or want to change, that's the irony of self-help, <laughs> is that we're saying inherently, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not okay, I'm not I'm not, uh, I'm lacking something. There's something missing. There's something wrong, right? And so as we, um, so, so the, the mystery of this plant medicine is that it brings us into harmony and resonance. Uh, and, and in that harmony and resonance, then everything is in flow. There's a, a mathematical equation called the Kurimoto equation. 
um, and it is an undergraduate physics experiment, and it, you can look it up online. Just type in 32 metronomes and on YouTube, and, and you'll see a video of 32 metronomes on a loosely held platform that gets started all at different times, and they eventually all come into synchronization with each other. And this undergraduate physics experiment is meant to show that all biological and physical systems tend towards harmony and synchronicity, that everything in the physical and biological world seeks harmony and wants to be in resonance with each other. And when we are out of resonance, you see what happens in the world <laughs> when disharmony emerges. Now, the good news is that disharmony is always a precursor to harmony, that chaos is always a precursor to order, that confusion is always a precursor to clarity. And so we know that something is seeking to emerge in our current political climate, um, but for us in our lives, we can know that if you're feeling out of sorts, it's the precursor to harmony and balance and order in your life. And, and there's lots of ways to get there. Plant medicine is a really powerful way. And Rhythmia it offers a really powerful way to do it in a week with about a 95, 96% success rate. Um, so I'll put a period on it there, doctor. <laughs> you know, um, why don't you share a, a couple of stories of um, experiences that people have had at Rhythmia, uh, some inspiring healings that you were aware of? Because I think that's always wonderful to share when I we're having share, this I would conversation. Love to. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. You know, there's some there's physical, emotional, and 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 psychological healings that occurred. I'll start with a physical healing that that's occurred. Um, one of the you know I started telling you a little bit about ayahuasca and what can happen. The physical something happens in your body, the pinta, um, and and then there's the consulta, right? When when you're looking at an image and the image talks to you, so there's you're, there's a consultation of some sort. You can actually have a conversation with a tree, with an ancestor, with your grandmother, you know, this happens quite a bit. And then finally, uh, there's a fourth thing that happens that we call a nada, which means, you know, nothing, right? And, um, and the Shipibo tradition says that, that, that we come in into this form in our lives, in, in, in this human physical form, on two lines. There's our ancestral line, our genetic line, our, our, our lineage, and then there's our karmic line. And, and, what they say anada is a very special event is when, when you, you drink the medicine and you go to sleep and you wake up and you just have a sense of clarity uh, about something, about your question, about your life. Um, and the, 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 the indigenous practitioners say this is because something traumatic, so traumatic happened way back on either our ancestral line or our karmic line that the medicine in its magnanimity uh, you know, puts you to sleep so that it can heal this. So I had a lady, you know, I asked, you know, anybody get a nada? And this lady raised her hand and I said, okay, so tell me about your nada. You drank the medicine, you went to sleep. She said, I drank the medicine, I went to sleep. And when I, my husband woke me up at the end of ceremony and the crickets were so loud. They were deafening. The crickets were deafening. I'm thinking, okay, the crickets are deafening. You know, <laughs> you must have really been deep in the medicine. And she said, and I, my husband helped me up, and I, it took me 45 minutes to walk to my room. I was off balance. I couldn't – he had to hold me up. I was really thinking I'm out of sorts. And um, I said, so, so what do you – what makes you think this was a nada? Did you have a sense of clarity about uh, an issue in your life? And she said, yes, I can hear. And I said, you were deaf before? She said, I was deaf in my left ear. I had sudden hearing loss at the age of 17 from a diving accident. And I've been deaf all my, all, for, for 35 years. I've been deaf in my left ear. And after one night of medicine, she could hear. And the crickets being so deafening were because she actually could hear out of both ears. It was really loud for her and her inability to walk. Uh, her, she, and her husband was sitting, bursting his buff buttons, you know, the whole time saying, I was standing on her left side, walking her down the path. And I, I, for, for all of our marriage, I couldn't talk to her from the left side. And I was asking her questions and she was responding, but she didn't know she could hear, you know, out of her left ear. It took her a minute to realize. So we've had, we've had physical healings, uh, 
of all sorts, but that's one of the most mm. profound that, that I, and really touching, um, mental disorders, um, are frequently healed. Some of the most profound, um, spiritual and emotional healings. You know, we had a gentleman, a young man come in with his mother. Now, you know, as a therapist, Dr. Stillman, you, you can already see, you know, the guy comes with his o- overprotected mother and he's, he's completely on the spectrum, you know, can barely talk, won't make eye contact with anybody. He sits there while his mother talks for him about him, etc. And, and of course she came for him. Right. And, uh, and, and this young man did ceremony. I think on the third night after ceremony, uh, I was, it was the next day, you know, and I was walking down the path and I ran into him and, and I just said, Oh, hi, how are you? Isn't that, look at, isn't that beautiful? That, that tree in the sunset. And he goes, Oh yes, it's so beautiful. I am just in love with this flower over here. And there's a hummingbird. And I mean, he starts talking and I hadn't heard two words out of the guy's mouth mm. all week, you know, um, there is there is a, a release of of trauma and the things that are blocking us from our good. We have had so many people. Um, I had an air traffic controller. The first three nights of ceremony were so challenging for him. And, and this I'll combine like three or four stories because it's happened so frequently. Many people come the the first few nights are very challenging and they want to stop. Right, like this isn't for me. Why would anybody do this? This is crazy. Um, and, and we always say that the medicine is, is, it's not so much what you experience in ceremony, but it's how it's making you feel. And do you feel that way in life? Uh, and when's the first time you remember feeling that way? This is the clue to who I've become. And, um, and this, you know, this kind of, this type of person that comes that experiences tremendous anxiety and trauma, uh, tend to have a, a, a severe reaction in the beginning. Uh, they're bound up in their lives. They're, they're closed off. They are resistant, um, lost, hopeless, um, feeling, you know, deep anxiety and stress. Um, and, and so this is what comes up for them, right? And, and we always say what's coming is going, that things are being brought up to be healed. They're being brought up to be released. You have to go through them. You know, the quickest way out is through. You have to go through them. So I always encourage people, you know, stick with it. Um, this is healing. Trust me, you are healing. And it without fail on Friday morning after the last ceremony is Thursday night, people come out with the most amazing healings that the air traffic controller said, I was on going into ceremony on Thursday night. I, I said to you, I'm physically exhausted. My body cannot take this. And I said to him, the exhaustion is, is being relieved from you. And he came out and he said, I am energized. You know, I was tired after 32 something years as an air traffic controller. And I realized that that those three nights were pulling out that trauma from me, that, that stress and anxiety. I am renewed and alive again. I had a Russian lady, same thing, you know, Wednesday night, she's telling me, or Wednesday day, she's telling me, I can't do this. I said, I hope just be this. What's, You don't have to make sense of it. Just be with, allow, and really feel. How is it making you feel? Be be a witness to what you're experiencing without judging it. And she came out on Friday. She said, Sean, you tell me. (laughs) This man told me I must watch. So I watch. She said to me, (laughs) I watch. And thank you for telling me to watch, John, because I could see that that all of this was being pulled out of me. Um. And she said to me, uh, John, I got it. I said, what did you get? And she said, freedom is observation without judgment. And I went, wow, that's a brilliant statement. Where'd you get that? She goes, in ceremony. <laughs> that's what we do here. <laughs> so, so this lady who was so bound up, so tight, so anxiety-ridden and stress-ridden and, and, and closed to the potential and possibility of life, went through a period that was challenging in in releasing that trauma that was holding her back. Those, the things that blocked her from seeing the good that was rushing towards her always and came out realizing that there was was her opinions and judgments of life that were making her reticent to the good that was coming. 
And so the statement freedom is observation without judgment is such a beautiful declaration that if I can open up gently to life and allow that which is emerging to emerge without me trying to make something happen, force it or judge or have an opinion about it, then the truth is revealed and I have true freedom. And this is a freedom that lasts. So there's so many more that I could share with you, but there's a few. <laughs> and, and I just want to add that I have seen people who've come in with chronic illnesses and who've, re- who've healed their chronic illnesses and uh, people who've come in with severe trauma. They've been in war zones. They've been abused as children and it's affected them their whole life. It's like that default setting in their brains is repeat those patterns and that gets healed and people have a huge sense of forgiveness and gratitude and people's hearts are open, which is really where that healing happens. Um, so it, it's it's a place of miracles. I have to say, Rhythmia is a place where miracles happen. And that's that statistic you gave that 96% of people acknowledge that they had a miracle the week they were there. So um, we're kind of coming to the end of our conversation, John. And I, I, I do want people to know that uh, Rhythmia, Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica is a, a, a place where you can go for a week. It's a week-long program. It incorporates uh, four journeys, plant medicine, four ceremonies, we call them. You do breath work. There's massages. There's colonics. There's organic food. There's meditation. There's yoga. <laughs> there's, uh, a, it's an integrated week that supports the journey of healing and transformation that centers on the use of plant medicine over four nights. And it's an extraordinary experience. It's, it's so highly rated. I know TripAdvisor has stated it's the number one retreat center. The reports and testimonials are just glowing and profound. So if people are interested in their journey, their spiritual awakening, their healing, check out Rhythmia. Uh, check out Rhythmia, which is R-Y-T-H-M-I-A.com, and you can go to rhythmia.com slash summon. And um, and you will get guidance. Uh, I am going the week of May 9th to 16th. There is a discount for people who come with me during that week. And if you are drawn to this as 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 a part of their spiritual healing journey, then please consider coming to Rhythmia May 9th to 16th that week. And... Uh, have your life be totally changed and transformed. I guarantee it will be the, <laughs> that will be the gift you will receive. So, um, having said all of that, oh, and if people do have any questions about plant medicine or about Rhythmia or the week that I will be there teaching, as well as uh, bringing a group, then just contact me at go to my website drs dr s at dr cheryl selman dot com. And for people, I just want to spell that, S-H-E-R-R-I-L-L, S-E-L-L-M-A-N. People are not familiar with my unique spelling. Uh, John, it's just been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and to hear your passion and uh, knowing that you are truly fulfilling the great service that you have set your intention to fulfill. So it's just a, an honor and a joy and a pleasure to have this time with you. And I look forward to seeing you when I am back in May. We love it when you're there, Dr. Selman. We just love it, and we love all the people that you bring. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure and honor as well. Thank you, John. And thank you all who've been listening. Remember, fill your week with love, peace, and harmony. And until next time, be well and take care. Bye for now.